Money Control presents Pitchcraft in collaboration with Seed to Scale. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Pitchcraft, a brand new show where we deconstruct the pitch decks of some of India's most successful startups. We're so excited to launch this show with an entrepreneur who literally is the OG of the Indian startup ecosystem and the SaaS space in particular. Presenting Girish Matrabutham, the founder and CEO of Freshworks. But first, here's a look at the Freshworks journey. The Freshworks journey began in 2010 when former Zoho executives Girish Matrabutham and Shan Krishnasamy founded an on demand customer support software for multi channel and customer support which was then called Freshdesk. The Chennai-based firm raised a million dollars in funding from Axel in 2011 and would go on to become one of India's most celebrated success stories in SaaS or software as a service. It believed the future of customer support was on the cloud and a good portion of it will happen on Facebook and Twitter. Freshdesk expanded to sales and customer relationship management and later rebranded to Freshworks. In 2021, it became the first Indian SaaS firm to list on Nasdaq with a billion dollar listing. But what sets Girish apart is that he not only grew the company but also the SaaS ecosystem in India through initiatives such as SaaS Bhoomi and the Together Fund through which he invests in early-stage startups. We dive into Freshworks' maiden pitch deck. Hello and welcome to this episode of Pitchcraft. We're very, very excited to have Freshworks' founder and CEO Girish Matrabutham. He's one of the OGs of the Indian startup ecosystem and certainly for the SaaS ecosystem. And Girish, you know, it's very surreal to have you on a show called Pitchcraft because today everyone knows you as this NASDAQ listed company. And here we are discussing a 13 year old deck, your first deck when you were raising series A, when you were not called fresh works, you were actually called fresh desk. So the context has changed so much in 13 years. But uh, tell me what was going through your mind when you created this magical deck that helped you land that 1 million check from Axel. Obviously, this deck uh, is very nostalgic today. Okay, you can call it magical. I think uh, when I was creating it, it was uh, more of hope than... Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so, I think... Uh, First of all, let me give you some context, right? In 2010, till 2010, I had never met a VC in life. So I did not know what the term venture capital actually meant. So that's the context, it's important to understand. So I had worked at Zoho and I, I was building products. So I did not understand venture capital and have never met one. So, but uh, my plan originally was to build a help desk because that's what I know how to build. I built four help desks before fresh desk. So we thought, okay, six people, uh, we can build and start charging money from customers and uh, grow our way uh, to first a million dollars of revenue and pay ourselves market salary. That was the dream. Mm -hmm. The dream, into the, if, I, if I say my dream was to make a dent in the universe or build a, a unicorn, I would be lying to you, right? Uh, like my dream was always somehow try and get to a million dollars and pay ourselves decent salary. But then what I realized was, the biggest learning was, hey, we are operating in a SaaS model where there is front loading of marketing costs. Yeah. So you have to spend money. To Let's say you have to spend $1,000 mm. to acquire a customer who may pay you $100 a month. So which means I need to front load capital so that I can eventually, if the customer stays with me for three years, four years, I'll make a lot of profit from the customer, but I need to really have capital available up front. So that is the realization for me that okay, we need to go and raise VC funding, right? So that's when, uh, um, okay, I had to figure out what, like when I asked for some friend introductions, everybody said, hey, can you send a pitch deck? Can you send a pitch deck? Then I had to go and Google, what the hell is, what a, is pitch a pitch deck? deck? <laughs> <laughs> so I would actually credit uh, um, Venture Hacks hmm. uh, for this, right? Neville Ravikant, when Ravikan. he was running Venture Hacks, 
there was a nice article which actually part one and part two which said okay how to prepare a pitch deck right what should you cover so i think uh, that was my uh, uh, source to go and understand okay what is a pitch deck and it covers things like okay what you have to talk about the market the problem that you're solving your team if you have any traction uh, like and then your uh, how you're going to get repeatable customers your go to market and so on so i decided okay one slide for everything so and that's how this deck came about how important was this deck or was it more you and your you know conviction the fact that you built this before and you had a very clear vision of what you want to do what problem you want to solve see i think uh, it's not either or the mm -hmm. deck is a very very important first uh, uh, impression maker to an investor today i can tell you that because i am on the other side of the table at together fund where uh, i am also receiving a lot of uh, uh, decks right so i will quote something that i heard uh, somewhere right uh, the, the analogy is from sport so if you spot a 16 year old it's impossible 16 year old athlete hmm. it's impossible to predict whether they are going to become a world class athlete but it's easy to say who won't become a world class athlete right so so that's the analogy that i'm using so a deck may not get you the funding but it can definitely get you rejected right so if you a, a poorly done deck uh, where i always look for craftsmanship right that's a value that is close to my heart so are you spending the time and effort to tell the right story focus on even the attention to detail if the, if the deck has typo errors if the deck has uh, unnecessary uh, rambling so all these things can easily get you out the door won't get you the meeting with the investor right so th the deck is is an assist which helps getting you the meeting with the right person and then how you articulate the story what 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 is an investor really looking for right see they are looking for hey does this person have the right to win in this space they are saying they are going to build this how can i trust like what what are the uh, uh, what is the okay do they know the recipe do they have the ingredients mm. to actually cook up this beautiful product that that's it right so and and then is there demand for this product so i think uh, the deck has to tell the story the entrepreneur or founder has to tell the story and was that your thinking process that you know i will have the ingredients or the recipe because um, your deck actually begins with the team to establish that you know all of us know what we are talking about we have done this before and in fact you describe one of the early employees as you know support rock star um i mean from your deck kirish there's a sense of confidence that i see and it also doesn't you know it's not all over the place you're very clear about what you want to do how you're going to solve it who your rivals are where they are failing and where you will succeed so i don't know it just has a sense of confidence so where is that coming from see, see i think in 2023 if you look at the fresh desk deck uh, you can feel confident about it because we know it's a key deck it is 2020 yeah. so yeah. Uh, but see i think uh, in 2010 or 2011 when i was making the deck i think i was looking at him hey, what is my story see every story needs to have key highlights or or the best scenes right so we were just building the product so that cannot be the highlight right we are operating in a big market for me it's always like okay that's known but what is the differentiator like today you can see so many people from freshworks getting funded right that's because the fresh work experience is the highlight yeah. so i think for us like the magic happens with the team i've always my magic always happens with the team i cannot uh, uh, do my work without people right so so for me the strongest aspect of our business in 2011 and i would say in even in 2023 the strongest aspect of the fresh work business is the people so i i always said okay let's put our strongest asset first like this is who we are and we know how to do this and we will do it so so that's why the team comes first And, and by the way, the support rock star. Uh, the context of that is very, very important. So Vijay had uh, worked for me. He went to start an MSP business. Went to Trichy to start an MSP business, and then realized it's not going to work out. He was coming back to Chennai, looking to join a company. We had not even launched the product. We hmm. had no customers, but I had to hire him as the support person. Right now, who is he going to support if there are no customers? But th that is also some one of the early uh, 
tactics that I used was if I know that somebody is good, I'll just hire them. I bet on the people and then we'll figure out uh, well, the right role for them later. And mm -hmm. Vijay was our first pre-sales person until we got customers. He was running pre-sales for a long, long time. And then he loved it and he just stayed on in pre-sales. Right. Um, you were also competing, uh, you know, in a place which had large giants, right? I mean, it had upstarts, but it also had the legacy players. So would that have been, you know, one of the first questions that investors ask you? Why do you have the right to win when there are so many giants? And that's why one slide actually goes into, I mean, you upfront mention who your rivals are. And you also say 5,000 customers, you know, worst customer service, stuff like that. So did you feel the need that, you know, you have to impress upon your investors upfront that this is your differentiator despite being in this space? See, I think, uh, first of all, let me tell you, there were 600 help desks already in the market when we started Freshdesk. So there is a website which you can go and look up today called helpdesks.com where you can sort and filter and search if you want web-based help desk or uh, uh, um, like on-premise help desk uh, and so on and so forth. So, but we enter a red ocean market by choice because our go-to-market model is the business, is the differentiator, right? So a lot of times, see, this is important for founders to understand and also investors to understand, right? So. A lot of times, when you see technology disruption, mm. it's easy to understand. Like we have seen Uber come and disrupt the transport industry. Everybody understands, hey, technology is available. There's a smartphone with GPS available. You push a button, the car comes to you. People can easily understand. The normal person can understand how Uber is disruptive, right? Yeah. There's a lot more sophistication of how Uber can be even more disruptive, but let's not get into that. But business model disruption is not so easily understood uh, by the normal common uh, uh, person, right? So with Freshworks, our whole differentiation was business model disruption. So we were not hiring expensive salespeople and going and selling top down to the Fortune 500 uh, companies. We were going global, right, from mm -hmm. day one. So we were going online, driving traffic to our website for people who are searching for it. So the beauty of a red ocean market is there is enough search volume. So people know, it's, it's like you wanting to go and buy a TV or a fridge, right? So you don't go to a, a, a Tata Chroma store where somebody will convince you why do you need to buy a washing machine so that you can uh, um, enjoy the comforts of time and so on, right? You know, hey, I want an IFB washing machine, 6.5 liter front loading. And then the salesperson will tell, hey, uh, ma'am, this is a better model from LG, this is quiet. So that's, that's the difference. Somebody who knows what they want, they're coming in, they're already middle of the funnel and selling to them is much more easier as opposed to somebody who does not even know that they need the product, right? So the dominant go-to-market motion till that time when we were entering was top-down, enterprise-heavy sales. The giants that you're talking about, they all sell to the CXOs and the VPs. So we were going bottom-up before, the term, before the term PLG came into effect, right? Product-led growth or inbound. So we were doing inbound from day one. So people will come, the first customer, we launched the product on June 7th. On June 10th, Perth, uh, like from Perth, Australia, Atwell College, comes online, spends two and a half hours with the product, puts their credit card and started paying us the $8. Right? Wow. So, so that is uh, This PLG. was in 2010, right? 2011. 2011. Okay. So I think that was the business model disruption that uh, uh, we had. And again, I wasn't able to articulate this as clearly uh, back then, but I think um, the go-to-market slide would kind of hmm. uh, show you my articulation of hey, how are we going to get leads coming to us. And then I think the other important thing, which I, again you should this ask. This one, uh, right? Yeah. The so, marketing one, the obvious and yeah. new act. So which actually, you see hmm. here, if you see, it doesn't talk about going to big trade shows or going to uh, hiring a VP of sales or go-to-market is all Okay, go and do online uh, Digital, acquisition. Digital, Facebook of ads yes. and uh, so and, the, and then the ads. other aspect mm. was we were demonstrating success with that. When our beta had 500 beta signups, by the time we signed the term sheet with Axel, we had 70 customers who were paying us an average of 30 dollars a month. Right. Wow. So so that was clearly what, what we were showing that our model was working. And did you work on the entire pitch deck yourself? How, yes. how was it the yeah, founding? I didn't have any help because the rest of the folks were all technical in my team. So I'm the only one uh, doing this at that time. And once you had the deck ready, how did you go about, you know, the next stage in terms of 
accessing investors and how did Axel finally close? We'll get more on that from someone from Axel, but from your perspective. No, I think, uh, like, see, one, okay, one thing I was very clear. See, when I went, go and attend events, I used to see a lot of founders going and uh, running behind the investors, uh, trying to, when they're having their coffee, trying to steal two minutes and try to pitch their idea. So, so I think I'm kind of, uh, I, I'm not that, uh, I cannot say I, I'm extroverted, but you know what I'm saying, like in yeah, a crowd, yeah. I don't go and do unnecessary talk, right? So I like to talk to somebody when there is something meaningful to share. And, and I didn't want, I, I was completely against that. So maybe that is why I'm an inbound guy versus an outbound. So I always felt I had to have a better way of attracting investors, right? So I did, um, went through a lot of introductions. Like there are many people like Neville Ravikant or Shramana Mitra who actually sent out intro emails which uh, uh, got me email responses and that's how when I try to connect they will say send me the pitch deck so I had to create the pitch deck and then send it. So this pitch deck has probably gone to pretty much every VC firm in India, right? So and uh, but I think what also helped hmm. was a true inbound, uh, I didn't, I won't say it was designed but it happened. So on March 18th, 2011. Uh, there was an AppSumo uh, contest, uh, mm, mm. right? So, AppSumo had uh, said, hey, there is a $550,000 AWS credits or whatever. If you have to write a, a, a blog post on how your startup is a lean startup. So, I, I was like, we were still working on product. We had not released. So, I had time to write a blog post. So, I wrote uh, <laughs> how a simple comment on Hacker News made me quit my comfort. I remember this went viral, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, I uh, wrote that how a simple comment on Hacker News made me quit my comfortable job and start a startup. And I posted that on Hacker News. So we didn't win the AppSumo contest, but Hacker News, it went really viral. And that's how Nevel saw the post and uh, I had thanked Nevel. So in, in that post, I also had mentioned Venture Hacks, uh, how um, they had helped, uh, they have good resources for entrepreneurs. So he wrote to thank me and they had started AngelList. He said, you should list your startup on AngelList. So we were the first Indian startup. Uh, to actually uh, go on angel list and uh, so they did some introduction but more importantly this post getting viral was picked up by a few other folks they came inbound so I think uh, Anand Daniel had also seen this uh, uh, Hacker News Anand post. Anand of Axel yeah yeah. yeah yeah but you've always uh, sort of turned to storytelling uh, you know even when you talk or when you narrate anecdotes of course you also use a lot of movie references but was that you know, always a part of you, even in your previous role at Zoho, something that you consciously developed as an entrepreneur, because people ultimately buy into that. I mean, the product, yes, clients, yes, but people also want that story. See, I think at the end of the day, everybody learns differently. Hmm. So there are people who learn a lot from books and they will quote books, right? There are people who learn a lot from maybe Mahabharata or uh, all the, all the uh, or, or Bible or Quran and they quote that, right? I think I've learned a lot from movies and, and sports and I, I use that basically, okay, I, I'm a trainer by choice. I, I like teaching. So one thing I know is I have to land the message. If I come and talk abstract English and if people don't get it, that bothers me, right? So if, if I want to say something, I want to make sure whatever I'm saying actually lands uh, in the audience or, or in the student's mind, right? So so. I think when uh, I was a Java trainer, I realized how hard it was to teach Java interfaces and stuff like that, right? So what I picked up from the book Bruce Eckel was analogies actually uh, are a great way of helping land a message. People actually, like, you know, in, in even in startup world, people say, hey, the Uber of X, Correct. right? So, Correct. so you have Correct. to bring an analogy so that First, people can quickly understand what you're trying to do. The only analogy which is actually not in this deck, in the next version of this deck was, hmm. I had a roadmap uh, uh, section of what we could build. I had an iPhone analogy uh, where an iPhone had so many apps. So the, the iPhone of customer support would have surveys, return merchandise authorization. So I had, I remember that was uh, uh, actually pitched to Samir Gandhi of Axel, uh, where I would have an iPhone wireframe. Uh, which is the iPhone of customer support with all these different apps that uh, uh, we would build like chat and telephony and we built out a lot of that stuff, you know, mm. fresh chat and fresh caller and now we have So iPhone of customer service, support. that was yeah. the, so, so. and interestingly I think I read this somewhere that while the deck only mentioned customer support, right, a fresh desk for customer support, in your mind you knew that this will eventually 
touch multiple areas from sales to IT services, uh, help desk to CRM. Um, why didn't you add it in the desk? Was it you know not to muddle the VC because they'll <laughs> yeah. be like you so know how I, many I things are you doing? I had actually booked forty domains in two thousand ten and eleven with Fresh, which started with Fresh, right? Hmm. But you also have to understand that uh, see, definitely did not see you have to start somewhere, build one, show success, and then grow. So that was a long term plan, but I didn't want to say that because see, most of the investors did not understand. Uh, that multi-product model well, right? Hmm. Only when 2014, the Atlassian IPO happened, uh, people actually understood the alternate model. The, see, the, the proven enterprise model was the Salesforce ServiceNow model where you go after large enterprise and, and you keep going. The Atlassian model was open to the public only in 2014 during IPO. I'm just saying, when I say public, I mean even Silicon Valley investors, right? So I did not, I did not want to jeopardize my chances of getting funding because if I had told Shaker that, hey, I'm going to build fresh desk and fresh service and fresh chat and fresh call, he would say, okay, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Girish spoke a lot about Shekhar. So on that note, we are going to bring in Shekhar Kirani who wrote that first check for fresh works on the other side of this episode. Welcome back to Pitchcraft and as promised we have uh, Shekhar Kirani of Axel who wrote that 1 million check for Freshdesk way back in 2011 and now they have a market cap of what 6 billion dollars so that's an outsized outcome uh, Shekhar and you know I described uh, Girish as the OG when it comes to SaaS entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs in general but Shekhar is the OG when it comes to SaaS investing in India literally any SaaS unicorn you can think of, right? Uh, Freshworks, Chargebee, Zenoti, Browser Stack. What names am I missing? They all <laughs> Amagi. have uh, Amagi. Amagi. They yeah. all have the Shekhar Kirani touch. But this was your first investment, uh, right, Shekhar? Yeah, he, as he an gave, Axel partner. So yeah. this was so I had he joined in 2011, the, hmm. and this was my very first investment. So he gave us, you know, the perspective of the deck from the founder's lens on what he wanted to convey, what he didn't want to convey, or you know, confuse investors with. What struck you about the deck and about Girish when you met him? Thank you for uh, doing this because uh, a decade-old fond memories of uh, making a decision hmm. and some of that working in the favor makes everybody happy including me thanks for uh, putting this together so <clears throat> you know i had joined uh, axel to look at mobile and sas hmm. uh, i had come from valley being part of two startups and both were subscription businesses, both were successful, both were sold to one to Motorola and, and one to Verisign. So I was looking at, hey, how do we build somewhat similar companies in India? And if, you, if I find those, I want to invest. So when I joined Axel, I spoke to Subrata and Prashant and Mahendran. They all said, go and do it. And in fact, I presented my SaaS thesis to them in Kurumangala Club and they said, looks good. I, we don't understand what you're trying to say. This, <laughs> You know, gross margin, CAC, and ARR, uh, yeah. ARR, because those were, they were all doing, you know, how much money each company is going to burn to get the next customer in India, <laughs> in Flipkart, Mintra, hmm. and so on. So, they said, go and do it. So, I'm running around, and uh, that's when the, you know, meeting a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs. My context was what had seen in... Uh, these large scale companies, subscription businesses, where I came from, very sign, 90 plus percent gra gross margin. It's like, you know, you, you, you know, next year's 93% of revenue is in your back pocket already because only 7% is yeah. churn. So Correct. whatever you do is new addition. The model was like extraordinary. So I was looking for the SaaS. And then uh, when I came to know that uh, there's someone called Girish in Chennai trying to build this uh, global software, I said, this is something that I need to go and meet and talk and understand. So that's where the journey started. So what impressed you about their deck? There were few things in this. First of all, attention to detail. See, he stressed that UI, modern UI is very important. You see throughout the deck, he talks about it. But if the deck itself was very poorly done, 
Hmm. Hmm. Right? You would notice that like, you know, okay, he says, but... But he's not... Uh, he doesn't know. Uh-huh. Look at even the logo. You know, for me, it has such five, six people, fresh desk logo was well crafted. You, I, this was the time like, you know, he's put the photo of everybody. Yeah. Every word he has chosen on the uh, each line. It was not rambling or random information, unnecessary extra information. There is a purpose to every word and a purpose to every sentence and purpose to every slide. So there was a story he, he had it. And that was like very impressive when I spoke to Girish because from later I found out about his training background. But when he was pitching, he was pitching for me, hmm. not for him. But most of the founders pitch what they know. It's not about what I want to know. So that part switch is there in this deck throughout. And this was very early. Obviously, there are things that are missing in the deck. But what I was looking for is, is this an entrepreneur who knows the market, who knows the product, who has built an early team that can come together and why would they win with what I was looking for? What's their right, uh, to, what's win? Their right mm. to win? Why would they win? Because it's a crowded market, as you said, Red Ocean, sitting far away place and uh, how the edge uh, they would get. Because the team, if you look at the background, you know, historically all VCs were backing up only IITNs, IIMs, none of the team members talked about that. You see, anywhere there's no education background. Hmm. What do founders say? Oh, I am from IIT. Sometimes they're in the top 50 rankers, they write also. <laughs> J.E. score. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? So hmm. what they were focusing on. Yes. Uh, oh, rank. Yeah. Yeah. What they were focusing on, who we are and what have we done hmm. and picked the things that matter for the business. So it was all purely on the performance. And if you look at it, you know, for example, very early in the first six, who would hire a UI engineer? Right, but Girish put the first 60 members, one UI person. Why? He said we have to win on UI. The tools are old and clunky. People spend way too much time to understand. If I'm going after SMB market, they have to be self-served. They need to understand how to use the product and make sure that UI is very easy to use. Mm. That was ingrained, but it shows off everywhere in the deck who hadn't even heard of the term VC before starting up and you know deciding that okay I need their money to you know for front-ended marketing how did you go about crafting a deck in in a way that you know it's I mean Shekhar goes through it and he knows exactly the problem the solution what you're offering is how much money you're going to make how much money you're going to spend so I think it all boils down to one word which is empathy having empathy which is if I'm a trainer I need to understand my audience and I need to know what, what's in it for them and give it to them, right? So same way, if somebody's going to give me a million dollars or whatever is the money, I need to understand what are they looking for, right? I did not understand VC, but why would somebody put money in the company? They need to know what problem we are solving. Why will customers need that problem? So if you look at some of the slides that I have on the, I'm just looking, I was just looking at it when Shaker was, uh, speaking so the problem and opportunity slide hmm. so basically I'm saying it's not about see this is my lesson le- life learning from doing being a Java trainer you know in 98 99 I was running a Java training Institute everybody wanted to learn Java it was very easy to sell it's called riding a wave right in 2001 I was again doing a Java training Institute but nobody wanted to study Java because dot-com bust has happened India assumed that IT would go away so I know that life lesson of riding a wave is important because you, Warren Buffett said that a rising tide lifts all boats, right? So I am actually trying to tell Shaker, hey, something is happening. There is a trend happening in customer service where most companies are sitting with a call center and an email based help desk. They are waiting for customers to call them. But this is happening. Customers are on Twitter, customers are on Facebook, customers are on blog posts, customers on YouTube. They are talking about the business everywhere. Now businesses are struggling to keep in contact with those customers and that is the fresh part of Freshdesk, right? So we will help a business. 
So what I found interesting is you've mentioned the two major trends, mm. but there is no slide called TAM or yeah. Total Addressable Market. And you know the first thing that any investor will say, what is your TAM? You know, what is the TAM and what percentage of TAM will you potentially capture? What has been captured so far? Why did you decide not to put it? <laughs> so first of all, I, I did not decide not to do it. I did not know that there was something <laughs> called TAM. Shekhar asked me the question, what is your TAM? I asked him, what is TAM? <laughs> so, okay, Maybe how, you thought what's Yeah, he said, yeah. how big is the market? My answer was very simple. You look at Oracle right now, uh, they are 300 million in revenue. Salesforce Service Cloud, they are billions in revenue even at that time. Uh, so, and then there are so many vertical players like Kana, Swartz, Ibodal, eGain, each one of them somewhere between 50 to 100 million revenue. So the market is big enough. So I don't want to spend time finding out what, how much is the time and what percentage of the market that I can get. But I was able to quote all these names mm. with the revenue, they're all on-premise. So mm. SaaS is the wave that I'm riding. This question came up many times after the investment and uh, over the years, he would say, Shekhar, stop asking the time question to the founders, <laughs> please. Because founders know how to build the product. Mm -hmm. You guys as VCs, go and do the work back in the back to figure out how big the time is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was obvious and to the, at that time, because see, the support needs are even every company. Once you sell something, you have to support it. And if there is a change in how support is delivered and it is moving to social, and I think there is a statement here, it's like the waiting for phone calls and email, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. the conversation has moved, moved elsewhere. elsewhere. Yeah. See, that is like one simple sentence captures so much of how the change is happening. So the question really at that time for me was, will the existing players will do all these new needs mm or before they catch up to it, will Girish's fresh desk get enough momentum so that they capture the market. So right. that's the game. He always, any question, he wouldn't answer theoretically. He would go back to his experience, bring that context back, and what has changed now, and answer back. Mm. Like, you know, hey, what about go to market? Like PLG we are talking about. His responses were always, I have done this, here, and if you look at one slide, he says, these are the obvious social channels, I know how to do it. And mm -hmm. in fact, he said, there are 40 such channels, I'm only telling you this, he told me after funding, he said, I don't want to tell you because you'll go and tell all your other <laughs> <laughs> companies. <laughs> because he's saying each channel, has a, no, no, each channel has a limit to how much I can squeeze. So he would, he would constantly, if you put too much money in each channel, you will become inefficient marketing wise. So he knew exactly how how to hedge his how to uh, how to mm. take each channel, exhaust that part, add more channels, and build it. And he also said, "This is the new channels I'm going to exploit as well." <coughs> right. So this, where did he get that part? He didn't make things up. He didn't read about it. it. Came from experience. That gave me confidence that this team knows how to do it. Work together. Market is happening. A change is happening, and. His conviction was, only way we will win is a better, easy to use UI. It has to be modern, very modern. Hmm. In fact, he used to say, when people play around, they cannot even think that it was built in India. It is built in some world-class location. That was his kind of uh, goal. So more, more interestingly, uh, okay, again, the context is, uh, Tiger, Axel, Google all wanted to lead the new round. And for me, Axel and Tiger are already investors. So I said, we want to get Google. But the, the, the other benefit was, I see in 2013, when we were doing campus recruitment, we had offered uh, uh, certain hmm. freshers from Shastra University. The girl accepted the offer, went back home. The parents told her, why are you joining a small company like Fresh Desk? We don't know which company that is. You should join TCS, hmm. right? So that was bothering me, right? So I wanted to change that. So now uh, we took money from Google so that I can put on the slide, this is Fresh Desk, it's a Google company. Google. <laughs> now I'm talking to the parents. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, okay, they cannot now say who is Fresh Desk, right? Now, they, they may not know Fresh Desk, but they know but they Google. Know Google. Yeah. So, now it's a Google company. So, I'm fighting or building for the parent so that uh, when we do the hard work and, and convince the uh, candidate to join us, uh, so I don't want uh, them going the, to some other company. <laughs> I, I, he also. I also had one more slide in the pre placement for that, right? Yeah. Because you're talking about yeah. building for them. So, I have a picture of this Sachin Tendulkar fan with the conch in cricket match. And then Gary Kirsten holding a bat, right? Yeah. 
So I actually say, if you are Sachin Tendulkar, who will you take advice from? So a well-wisher or a well-informed person. Yeah. So I want to seed that in the pre-placement talk because I want to preempt that conversation. Also, you know, he was telling me about an interesting anecdote when you first went to their office in uh, Chennai. <laughs> Chennai yeah. um, you noticed that uh, you know uh, they had what second hand yeah, furniture. Yeah, so second hand yeah. furniture. Like mm. the colors of every chair and <laughs> the tables were all different. I know it was like brought or whatever was left over in that uh, place, they had reused it. But they all had reasonably good quality mats. They're too big uh, display for the uh, UX work. So I, uh, my notice was, okay, they know exactly where to spend <laughs> money. And uh, then I asked him, uh, you know, at that time, uh, he had won, not yet he had not won, he had won already the Microsoft... Uh, this park, uh, uh, that was in June. Uh, uh, no, June, right, June, he had not won. But he, he's, he was giving me the formula of whatever money he would spend on SEO and SEM content, how it would translate into revenue. He says more money, he would go grow faster. And the VC is all about growing faster. So in fact, in this deck, it, he says, I need 500K. And actually we gave One 2X minute. of that part because the product, he already knew that already people are coming. And people, if he spends a little bit money, it can actually accelerate. And we knew there's a window of opportunity for him before the big folks come in. Was this slide also the clincher where he mentions all the private beta customers? Yeah, so... The fact so, that so he the, managed to get this from, what, four continents? No, no, see, that, yeah. tell you what, what, that was a very interesting thing. He said, I asked him why... I, I, I knew at that time that selling only to India, you will not make enough business. And I have been meeting a lot of founders, building SaaS products, but they would say I will sell in India. So I was waiting for someone to say I will build globally because I had come back from the Valley, US yeah. and I had seen how big businesses were built there. And I was looking, why can't we build like exactly how services is built for global audience? Why can't we build product companies from here? So that was my conviction that this is possible to do. And when I met him and he said, Shekhar, this is my beta customers. Look, look at all this. There's not even, I think, maybe one, or there's not even one Indian company. And, and secondly, he said, guess what, Shekhar? After I, we launched, our first se uh, seven customers came from four continents. So for me, he didn't know that I'm looking for it. But right? it worked. Uh, it worked in my favor because I've been looking for the global company to start. And he said, as soon as I put it world, worldwide, people are looking for it. If they find it, they can play around. So, and you can use that beta was free and people use it and they're all coming from different parts of the world. So that part of conversation made me believe that this is a global company. Day one global company. Got it. Got I'll it. share another interesting tidbit, right? Till we had 100 customers, I did not actually physically meet any customer. Yeah. So we would do uh, Zoom or, or uh, whatever there was, WebEx demos or whatever, yeah. go to meeting demos. And uh, Vijay and I would actually engage in close deals. Actually, uh, when we had 100 customers, when I actually made the first customer visit, but that also was not for the Freshworks business. It was to meet Deep Kalra of Make My Trip. <laughs> I just wanted to go and meet Deep. I used the opportunity because his team was uh, evaluating. So I set up a meeting and went and uh, said hello. So that was, so our model was very uh, online and, and low touch as opposed to go and meet customers. There was another slide mm -hmm. which also for me indicated uh, about how much they know about the market. There was like key competitors. Right. Usually right. founders right. They don't, uh, don't want to talk they about, it. Like, talk they about say, competition. It's your yeah. job to go and figure out competition, right? As VCs, yeah. you know. Uh, but he had put information there, including, you know. Including their, uh, key their negative. Key competition, Zendesk, yeah. yeah. is in 5,000 customers. So it is a fearful thing, yeah. right? You are you're starting with zero. There is a 5,000 customer, well-funded in the valley, continuing to scale well. How do you win? But for him, putting that information to build that confidence. That and I know this I know I know about this. And I'm still taking them. I'm, I'm, I'm still taking, I'm going to take on them. And I'm going to build a better product because he had looked at their, I asked him, how do you win? He said, hey, there are some tickets in their Zendesk for 12 months, they have not addressed. Multi-product is a very important one. I have seen this in my previous life. I am going to make my products to support multiple products. Like, so in, in same team is support multiple products in a company. 
So, they need these capabilities otherwise they have to have multiple Zendesk instances. I am going to beat that in that way. So, better product, better UI and he also says a little bit like affordable for SMBs. Hmm. It's actually the very powerful sentence there. Because he mentions the price points uh, of his uh, rivals. Uh, because right? affordable SMBs, if that part, I think he has squeezed that, Girish and team have squeezed that for a very long time, even now probably. Because that, he said, I can do it because my business model supports it, building out of India and low touch, premium way of building and bottom up sales model. Then eventually when customers, large enterprise game, now he's doing larger enterprise deals. But when he started, the DNA of the team was, I will make sure it's a world-class product and later we coined the term like hey 2x the value at half the cost can mm. we build 2x the value at half the cost so that we can win and customers would come and his knowledge of pricing he used to have three pricing then he had five pricing model he would tell me why somebody would buy the fourth column not on the fifth one because it will be priced heavily because he knew the psychology of the buyers also mm. many of these things was also learning for me but at that time when I met him, the, my, my, my takeaway at that time was, if I know about a company or the market, more so than the founder, I rarely invest in them. <laughs> that was my big takeaway. That's a good Girish. heuristic to no, have. For me, like, you mm. know, he's spending 24 by 7 in the market. I'm an investor. I'm meeting a lot of folks. When I go and meet a founder and a founder explains to me and educates me how the market, how it operates, why they would win right and who are the, the competition yeah. and what is the model and he's giving unit economics here even though we had, you know, very early on and how they would do it. That information for me was okay, this person knows the market more so than me and I usually study like hell before I, before I meet anybody. I, I do so much of homework. That for me was a yardstick. Only slide actually I felt I would add value to Girish hmm. was the last slide, the business model slide. Right. Financial model. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew that was the only slide he built for, for VCs. <laughs> <laughs> and it was also the slide he was saying that he can be profitable, profitable. In this with five, I know, with a, a small amount of money, which I knew that that won't build the VC model. So I said, okay. I will earn some stripes with Girish while building this out about like, hey, first churn has to come down. We didn't discuss much about that. In fact, I didn't even spend any time on this, this slide at all. I always say I, I hate Excel sheets, okay? <laughs> told me that. But uh, there is some merit to the planning exercise itself mm -hmm. because it allows you to capture the assumptions. It allows you to know what are the controllable variables and you have a target to work backwards. See, now if I know that I want to get to a million dollars, based on that, I know how many customers I want. Based yeah. on that, I know how many signups I want. Based on that, I know how many visitors I want. Based on that, I know how much I can spend. So that gives me, and I can break it down by month, so I can give the money to the marketer and say, go and drive so much traffic and track so much conversion, right? That's how we actually, see, and you have to understand, when you have just started, there's no marketer also, right? I am doing everything myself. Yeah. You know, from creating a pitch deck in 2010, you're now in a position where you evaluate pitch decks. Um, you have your own fund. So what would your, I mean, has it become a very commoditized thing, first of all, pitch decks? How do you make one pitch deck stand out from another? What would your advice be to entrepreneurs? See, because I'll, then you had to go to venture hacks and see. Yeah. Now probably you can ask an AI tool to create, <laughs> a, you know, a presentation and give it to you. See, I think uh, first of all, no investor is funding a pitch deck. Hmm. We are funding a business. We are funding a founder. So think of your pitch deck as uh, An assist. the jacket that you are wearing. Yeah. Ah. Right? Yeah. If you show up shabbily, you are going to be rejected or at least your first impression is not great. If you show up well dressed, at least people will think, oh, okay, okay, this is somebody I should be paying attention to. That is the role of the pitch deck, number one. So, which means the, the craftsmanship, the attention to detail, not having typos, uh, telling a, a, a clean story, focusing on the narrative. So, so, these are all the basic aspects. Now, two things I would say, especially from a founder standpoint, they have to understand that investors look at 
thousands of companies. Yeah. So you have to start from that Man. higher level. You cannot assume that, oh, the investor is not getting it. Right? You have spent your lifetime, you have spent 10 years in your previous company working on uh, uh, security and privacy on uh, uh, like maybe AI modeling or whatever, right? So an investor is not going to immediately be able to jump to that 500 feet level or 1000 feet level. So how do you educate, the, the, if an investor does not get it, the responsibility is on the founder. The pitch deck has to solve for that. Hmm. Like how do I contextualize, hey, where is the problem? Where is the opportunity? Who is the competition? How am I going to win? So, so that is the role of the deck. Now what Shekhar talked about is also very important. I always respect somebody who teaches me something. He said, if I know more than uh, more about the industry than the founder, then I rarely invest, right? So what is he actually saying? Am I learning from the founder? So, so this is a fundamental uh, trick that I used to tell my pre-sales people that to earn customer respect, you have to teach them something on the call. Like people wow. always respect people who teach them something new. So how do you look for, so that, that is where you complement the pitch deck, where you don't put everything on the pitch deck, you, you put the pitch deck at the higher level, you spin a narrative, you, and you, in fact, you can even seed the questions, right? Like if you, if you put competition and this, then you, you should expect, like what questions can come from each slide. If I show a, a growth trend which says, oh, in the first year I'm going to grow 10%, second year I'm going to grow 20%, but third year I'm going to 100%, Obviously, the investor would ask, what gives you the confidence the third year? Yeah. So yeah. you can engineer the questions also, right? Because it's, you, you, okay, having that empathy to look at your own deck like a third person and think about what will be going on in their mind and, and how can I use my experience to actually answer? So like, like in, when I was doing Java training, I, I would actually say like, uh, explain a concept and then I had a challenge with my friend. I'll say, somebody from the audience would ask this question. In every class it happened. Right? So because the way you logically land something, you're triggering off something in their brain where they will ask that question. Thank you so much for your time, Girish and Shekhar. This was such a fascinating conversation on the very first episode of Pitchcraft. Uh, we deconstructed Freshworks' very first pitch deck way back in 2011, um, where it was raising just $500,000. And look where it is now. It's a company listed on NASDAQ, so that's quite a remarkable journey. And uh, here's hoping this inspires many more entrepreneurs, helps them with their pitch decks. And hopefully we will have many more making that idea to IPO journey. In fact, uh, you can access the entire pitch deck. Just log on to seedtoscale.com. Money Control presents Pitchcraft in collaboration with Seed to Scale.